Okay, so as I was mentioning before, the uh, Flexbox is one of the most uh, it's a modern layout algorithms uh, and quite uh, simple to use uh, to uh, to get the most frequently needed uh, um, effects uh, in our website. So it, of course, it combines with the other grids and floats, uh, so that in, at every part of the page we may use, uh, we may choose uh, to apply a different uh, display algorithm. Uh, what um, mechanism of the flex box called the it's called the flex or flex box depends uh, depending on where you read it. Basically, you you have a you set up a container, and uh, the container will have the flex algorithm applied, so the property display flex, huh? and it will uh, uh, influence the layout of all the children, the first level children of the container itself. And uh, uh, these elements uh, may be of the, say, the, the order and the position in which these elements, the children, appear can be programmed uh, by choosing the alignment, uh, the direction, or left or right or, or middle, the direction, left or right or top to bottom, the roping on the next lines, uh, the relative sizes, uh, we can change the order and so on, all with properties on, of the children of the flex container. So basically, we have to define, if we want to apply a complex layout, we define one container, typically it would be a div element that contains some parts, and the children of this element will be the items that we want to, uh, say, align or we want to um, modify, oh, okay, to lay out in a specific way. Every HTML element, which is a di direct child of a flex container, is a flex item by definition. So we only reason about two levels, a container and the element it contains. And the container specifies the algorithm by which the, its children are positioned. And to turning a container into a flex container just means changing the algorithm. So instead of display blocker, which is the default for or div container, we change the algorithm in a display flex. And it will affect how the blocks corresponding to the children are, uh, are positioned. So every children will have its own box, and the problem is how to position the box relative to each other. And uh, then we have a set of additional properties uh, for saying whether the children should be justified left or center, uh, if they don't fill, they don't don't fill the whole row. The whole row. Do you want uh, space to be around them? Space to be on the right? Uh, space to be in the middle of them? So a lot of uh, details about uh, this flexible positioning uh, of of children elements. Whether uh, you want elements to be clipped at the end of the page, or the available margin, or you want them to rope around to the next line, and so on. All of these, uh, all of these uh, behaviors, high-level behaviors, basically, can be just set uh, with the properties that you give to the container, and then all the elements inside themselves will just flow uh, easily. Um, you can check the the horizontal alignment with justified content, or the vertical alignment with another property which is called align item. So you have really a lot of, uh, of flexibility, the direction of positioning. The size of the elements, so maybe you, you don't want to have uh, all of them uh, occupying the same uh, space. Uh, usually, uh, a flex tries to uh, give an equal amount of space to every block, maybe by increasing their margins uh, so that they are uh, uh, aligned in a neat way, in a, in a regular way. But if you want to give some uh, uh, elements a, a larger space, uh, you can do that uh, by setting a weight uh, measure. So it's just a relative weight. Uh, having a weight of one, one, and two means that this block uh, is as wide as the union of the previous two ones. Okay, so this is uh, twice as big uh, as, the, as the other ones, and so on. And so it will be very easy. 
okay, we don't uh, uh, want to see all the all the details, but the, but the idea is very very simple. Okay, of the flex mechanism. For example, imagine we something we 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 haven't tried to do yet uh, is to put the left column actually at the left of the content instead of at the top. Okay, so let's try to do that with a flex container. It means that we want to create one container with two elements, the left column and the rest of the, of the body, the main body, the main part of the body, right? So, uh, and if all, these are the only two elements that we want to you know, uh, align side by side, we create one container with only these two children. This container will be a flex. So let's create, uh, right now, these two containers are the aside and uh, the main component in my file. There, right now, they don't have any common parent, which is not also a parent of other nodes. So I cannot make uh, the flex at the level of the body, because that would contain also header, that would contain also footer, and they would all become children of the flex. This is not what I want. I want one container which on, that will only contain this side and this main element. Okay, let's uh, create another level of nesting of uh, maybe let's call it uh, container. And this div will only have two children that are the side and the main. I only collapsed some lines here in order to be able to see where I go. So let me reformat it. So right now I put the aside and the main as direct children of a new div. Right now I didn't do anything yet. Doesn't, this div does nothing as all the other divs, okay? Unless instructed by some style. And the guy and I did this container. So just to check, if I go there, I reload the page, everything is as, uh, as before. Okay. Now, let's turn this container ID, the container div, into a flex container. Go to the CSS, and at the end I say that the content div hash container, not my content, container, should be a flex container. Display flex. And this changes the layout of the children of the div. So they will no longer block layouts, but flex. And if I reload the page, okay, it's not nice to see, but at least the left column is on the left and the rest is on the right. Okay, so what I achieved is that, uh, let's inspect the code, we have uh, this, let me show the code, this container that occupies this part of the page, this container has two children, this left column, and this main content. And you see that this, this, the two elements are, are, have been given the same eighth. So the last column was just one line, but uh, it, has, it was uh, expanded to 173 pixels to match with the height of the other, which is normally what we would like to do. No? With, uh, with the floating property that this was a night, nightmare, night, a nightmare uh, to align the, the, the actual heights. And the right one is here, is the main. And we see that the page is not full yet. It may be space for more. So you, we could try it maybe to enlarge the sizes of the elements uh, to take more space. Uh, it's quite ugly because we have some margins on top here. So we could try to, uh, to, uh, to change a bit the layout, the margins, and so on to make it look more like we want. But the basic function of having one element the size of the other is uh, uh, automatically achieved with just one line of CSS. 
Okay. So if I want to make it a bit nicer, what I, what could I do? Okay, uh, uh, first of all, what is this space on top here? This space is the margin of the H1. Of course, the browser by default thinks that H1 are titles. And so as in a book, uh, when you have a, a chapter title, we have some spacing around it. But here, it doesn't really fit. So I should maybe remove the uh, margin of the H1 inside uh, here. We already have a, a selector for that here. Main H1, the H1 inside the main. I want to remove uh, the top margin. Margin top, let's put it to zero. So if I reload the page, at least I don't have that ugly margin on top. Maybe the left column should have the same background of the navigation bar to give continuity to the web page. So the left column is the aside. Uh, I can container side so the the aside element inside the container element I set the same background color as uh, as the nav bar was gray okay so it continues maybe it's a bit like a bit stretch, so I want to give a, a bit a little padding. So I can I set a padding left of 10 pixels or padding right? I'm making numbers up, okay, of course, not uh, just to see what happens. So this left column is more space to go. And uh, maybe some margin before the real content. So actually the, the, the main container, container main, I want to put a left margin. Okay, no 50 pixels. So right now this, I would remove the gray background, the green background, because actually it's ugly. Okay, also, the, also the yellow one, it was just for play. It looks more like structure. It's, it's still ugly, huh? but at least there's some uh, different organization of the spaces. By playing with the layout position and so on. I could also uh, say that this part is more important than the other. So as as far as the size occupied on the page, I could uh, set the, uh, for example, the aside container. We have a flex size of one, while maybe the main container could have a flex size of uh, four. 20%, 80%, 4 to 1. This give the, will give the relative weight. And so we see it when we resize the window that the right column is always uh, tends to be always uh, four times larger than the left column. They will not uh, you know, reduce the size in proportionally, but they, they this proportion will be not equal, not 50-50. So we are we giving hints uh, to the layout arguments uh, to um, actually maintain some proportions. Okay, so with a couple of uh, properties, this uh, flex container may reach a, an acceptable result. Basically, that uh, previously with other methods, with other low-level arguments, were were more were not impossible but they were much harder to, to achieve. Hmm? And right now we were working basically on uh, with the 
low level properties of CSS, not, not the low level, but all the direct CSS properties. Uh, Flex is very powerful, but it leaves out uh, still a lot of details to be set. All the margins, all the alignment, uh, all the fonts, uh, all the colors, and so on, we must set them by hand. Hmm? Because if we, if we let them Mm, without re refining them, we still get the browser defaults of uh, Times New Roman text uh, with that black uh, black text over white background, uh, and we need we need to change it uh, for for making a, 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 any acceptable layout page. And right now we can we know how to do that. Uh, just, I mean, maybe I'll only show you one one thing more at the CSS level how to get rid of this margin here. Okay, whose margin is this? Is the margin of the body. So, so to get rid of the margin between the first line or across the uh, left and right side of uh, of the lines, you you should uh, zero. You see that the mar the the, the um, body element uh, has a default margin of eight. So if you zero this margin and the left and right ones. Uh, you see that now you are taking all the space. But then it's your responsibility maybe to add a padding. Uh, no. Take, no. The, um, to the navigation bar, for example, because otherwise it would go too close to the to the board. So it's not, it's not difficult, but it, it requires a lot of details uh, and a lot of care uh, to have a, a good alignment. That is why. Since we understood the basic concept, we try to move to a library that already predefines a lot of styles for us. Okay, uh, and uh, and so we can and uh, we, we can of course customize and personalize what we want. But instead of starting from the default styles of the browser, which are really hard to see, we are starting from something which is already sensible out of the box. So with no effort, we already get something sensible. And if we want to customize it more, of course, uh, we can do that with CSS. And uh, there are several, let's say, libraries for doing that. Uh, one of them is the so-called uh, Bootstrap library, which also gives us a very big advantage that I want to mention here is that of easing the possibility of creating responsive layout. What is a responsive layout? Is a, a layout algorithm that is sensitive to the size of the device. Okay. Um, so imagine the flex that we had in our example. We have this left column that will shrink if we resize the device. But doesn't nothing more uh, uh, below a given size it cannot shrink anymore if i have a small device maybe a smartphone what i would do what i would like to do is to delete this column don't show it anymore because it ta it's taking over precious space the flex by itself can do that it's not able to do that but it can do that uh, we can do that by combining flex with uh, another portion of the CSS uh, framework, which is called the media queries. Media queries are uh, sort of selectors that are triggered by the, the size of the device. So whether it's uh, smaller or larger than a given number of pixels, some property will be applied or not. So we may have a sort of a media query that says that when the viewport size is less than 400 pixels, then instead of display flex, uh, this will be a display none, just hide it. Okay. Again, we can do that by hand by playing with these properties, or these uh, CSS frameworks already uh, are, I say, pre-programmed to do that. Huh? So the idea was uh, applying a selector that doesn't depend just on the HTML code, but also depends on some external properties. It's called media queries because we, uh, they can select whether the page is printed, goes to a media, or displayed, or displayed on a bigger screen, or displayed on a smaller screen. You can query the device and have some rules that only apply, 
for example, when the device has a minimum white of 900 pixels. Otherwise, that rule is not applied, for example. Hmm? So you can, by combining different media queries with minimum, maximum white, and so on, you can select different rules, CSS rules, that will hide or move or resize some parts of your page according to the size of the device. This is good because we only have one HTML code, one HTML page, different CSS rules that will be applied, but they really are part of a single CSS uh, style sheet where we mm, you know, surgically activate or deactivate some portions. Mm. This is the general idea. So that the same website could have the same contents, but laid out in a different way according to the viewport size. Okay, this is what we want to achieve. So we don't have to develop a mobile uh, layout and a desktop layout separately. We are trying to design one single layout that will automatically resize or reshuffle this element, its element, according to the size of the device. Because you never know. Uh, even a very simple operation like turning your phone around will dynamically change the resolution so you cannot choose uh, whether you go in one way or another at the beginning when you enter the website you have to adapt okay and this adaptation if it's done at the css level then it's free because it will be done directly by the browser all these rules are applied in real time by the browser you don't need to do anything you just have to set up the rules that what what do you want to happen okay to define what you want to happen and uh, the combination of flex and these uh, uh, media queries uh, uh, can achieve the results. And this is also powered by a concept uh, to make it this easier, because it's very hard to reason in terms of pixels. Okay, so how many pixels is uh, enough uh, for the sh for showing the sidebar, and how many are too few? And so I should move it down, or move it up, or uh, hide it. Hmm? Um, and so the most, uh, many, in particular the booster framework that we are going to use, uh, uh, help us to decide which kind of layout we want to achieve by dividing the page in 12 columns. So instead of saying, okay, I want this element to be maybe 600 pixel if the if the viewport is larger than 1000 or something like that that we will get uh, complicated very soon what we are saying is that okay i want this this content to occupy 12 columns i want this content to occupy three columns and so on and we can customize the number of columns that uh, every box will occupy depending on the size of the viewport depending on the size of the device so as we expand or contract the window of the browser, uh, the resolution will change. And so uh, if any given element will occupy more or less columns uh, according to the different sizes. We don't reason in uh, pixels, we reason in breakpoints. So we'll call them large, extra large, small, medium, extra small. And the number of pixels will be decided by the library. So on a, on a small screen, how many columns do you want this to uh, occupy? Five, okay. Uh, on a larger screen, how many columns do uh, you want to occupy? Only two, because this column will be larger. So there's more space for fitting extra content, and so on. Okay, so this is the basic uh, uh, layout algorithm that is used by this uh, Bootstrap framework. So let's see it uh, directly from the, from the website, and then we'll try to uh, the website is getbootstraps.com. Okay. It's uh, a set of CSS classes that have been designed with the layout and responsiveness in mind, and also with the sensible default. You, once you see it, uh, you will recognize it in many websites. Just for simplicity, they are applying that. Mm -hmm. um, Right now we are booster, booster version 5, 5 dot something. How can we apply 
this library to our code. So there's nothing more than CSS rules. So nothing that we couldn't do ourselves uh, with enough time and patience. Okay. Uh, the idea is uh, that we are downloading. Where is that? Mm, okay, let's go to download. We download a set of uh, CSS files. You can download these files, put them into your project, and link them to the head of your HTML page. Even better, uh, if we want, uh, you could. Uh, We could uh, uh, download the uh, Bootstrap files directly from the internet because they are already hosted on some server. And we can, instead of downloading to my project and linking there, we can link directly from there. Of course, uh, it, it's, it's assumed that your website will be visited by a person with an internet connection, okay? Not, uh, not disconnected from the network. Uh, so the what the, they are telling you is uh, try to copy these instructions and put them into the uh, where's my source code into the head of your of our web page let's try to comment the main css for the moment so that we don't have all the mess that we did okay so these are Strange link basically with a with a with a with a keyword that uh, ensures that, that we are downloading the right file that will not be messed up by some hacker. Uh, just for checking the integrity. If we save this, so we are loading a style sheet and some JavaScript file. For the moment, that will be just used for opening and closing menus or something like that. We don't need to look at that. But basically, we are loading a style sheet here from this website. And just by loading that, where is my browser? Okay, we the the the, the layout of the page changed a bit a bit. So I remove the main.css for all, so all of my customization. So I'm starting from the bare HTML page, but we see that compared to the normal default HTML, the fonts have changed. The margins are changed, so everything there's not this there, there isn't this bad margin around the body and so on. So this is not the final point, of course, it's start, the starting point. So we are applying some default styles to the text, to the content, which are a bit better than the real defaults, hmm? the, the browser defaults. And then we can start working on the actual uh, layout and content of the page. Sorry, where is that? Oh, okay, so always here in the browser. Okay, so we once once we loaded the the the, the web page, we should uh, use the classes. So all everything. We imagine you have a very big uh, uh, CSS file with a lot of rules. Uh, and then defines uh, basically a lot of classes, a lot of selectors that work on special classes. So when we want to apply a given style, we apply one bootstrap class to the elements that we want, and that will um, give us the, um, the, uh, the, the effect that we want. No? The, here, it gives us a template to start with that just contains this uh, link that we had before, and also JavaScript code different part, part, parts of the documentation tells you to put the script in different parts but uh, uh, it's not important hmm? and uh, um, okay how how do you use that but uh, the most uh, uh, let's uh, let's have a look at the documentation here okay we have a section about layout uh, that describes uh, the main classes for the main layout of the, con of the of the page. Then a section called uh, content uh, that uh, specifies some details, like for example tables. That we have a table there. Forms for interactive elements. 
So there are classes that are designed to work with uh, the HTML item for creating forms. There's a big uh, set of components. For example, if you want to create a navigation bar, there is a section called navigation bar that will describe you how to create with divs and the classes uh, a component that looks like a navigation bar, a model window, buttons of various types and so on. So these are very useful to, for working at a higher level rather than just the individual uh, HTML uh, element. Uh, utilities, uh, we have lower level uh, concepts like colors, uh, access to flex, uh, the background colors, the borders of the elements. Uh, if we need something more, something more specific than what Bootstrap is already doing, we, you find it here. So let's start from the most important part, the layout. Uh, how does it work? First of all, uh, Bootstrap will classify your current window into one of possible six possible sizes. Extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, or extra, extra large. One, two, three, four, five, seven, six. Depending on the number of pixel of the width of your window. And, uh, okay, so everything seen on a large screen would be probably la large or extra large. If you have a really wide screen, it would be extra, extra large. And so you have this uh, keyword, small, medium, large, uh, that uh, will, uh, if you there are a lot of class names. Some class names with uh, uh, SM inside will be applied only if the display has a, has a size at least of 566 pixels. So if, if you don't use any size class, then what you're defining applies always. Otherwise, it will apply only starting from a given resolution. Okay, so these, with these small letters, we can select which rules we want to work with, that, to, to be active at a given resolution. And the idea is, uh, with a given size, uh, uh, the rule will apply from that resolution on. Okay, if we don't specify the resolution, it will work always, even at extra small sizes. Uh, okay. Then we, there's a lot of other details that we don't need uh, to, to uh, and the these resolution are used uh, to position elements inside uh, a 12 column grid. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, bootstrap is that it will manage the layout of any container class. So if I want to lay out something using the CSS rules of Bootstrap, I put them into a container class. A container will contain a set of rows, and every row contains one or more columns. These are the columns of content. These columns will, will be laid out on top of the 12 available grids columns. So in this case, we have three columns inside the row. So each of them will take four grid columns. If we don't specify anything, the, the distribution will be even. So we don't, we don't have to, um, to, uh, to personalize in, in, in any way. But then the real, the real power is that uh, uh, we can decide so here we have a, a class call. This is a column. But then we can decide for every breakpoint whether this column has to be shown and how wide it should be. Uh, for example, it say, here it's saying, if we have a class, not just call, but call small four. What it means? It means that this element will occupy four columns out of the 12 available ones. So 
one third of the size of the screen if the resolution is small or higher. Okay, and uh, we can uh, uh, apply more than one class. This is a general rule. You can always apply more than one class to an element uh, to specify the number of columns at different black point sizes, at different sizes of the screen. Um, and all of these should be put into a container. Uh, with the, we have, there are two types of container. One is called container, and the other is called container fluid. Container fluid uses all the available width of the browser, and while the container uses only the, the central portion of, of the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, uh, they, are, they behave differently when you resize the window. And uh, there were some examples. For example, here is the, the basic behavior. We have two rows. One is divided into two columns, and the other is divided into three columns, and so the division is equal. And if I shrink the browser window, they will resize in proportion. Sorry, it goes down. Okay. There's no responsiveness. They just shrink. Sorry. I, okay. Like that. But if we want to do some other, let's say, proportion, not just equal sizes, you see, for example, in this example, the, the, the middle column here is wider than the others because it was programmed with a column six. So we'll always take 50% of the screen. And the other two, okay, we'll divide the remainder. So we'll be 50% and then 25 and 25. There's no responsiveness, they work at all resolution, so they just work proportionally, okay, up, up to now. So we can have, uh, like we saw in the flex, no, Bootstrap is using the flex engine uh, uh, behind, so we can understand how it works. Uh, okay, there are some other details, but uh, I wanted to come to this part here, uh, responsive classes. So this example, we have four... Uh, columns of equal spacing and four and two columns uh, with a uh, 8/4 so it's uh, three quarters and uh, not, uh, one third and two thirds hmm? uh, proportion these are not uh, uh, these are will work we work in a, say in a proportional way because we don't have any any media information here any breakpoint specified so they will work for the smallest resolution the idea, is start, the idea is start with what you want to see in the smaller resolution. And then specify how it should change if the resolution increases. For example, this is a, as a starts with the same picture. You see that uh, eight, four, and four columns. But we have uh, some media queries here. Eight and four, small, small. This means that... Uh, this block should, should use eight columns if the resolution is small or higher. So every, every time until the resolution becomes extra small. Sorry, I try to resize. And what happens if the resolution becomes extra small? That uh, this rule will not apply anymore. And so... Here you are. They will stack one below the other. Because the rule that's saying this is a column will not apply anymore if the resolution is not at least small, according to the breakpoint. And so by default, it will apply, it will occupy the whole, it will go into the block layout, no? one below the other. If we want to stack one besides the other, I should give them one number of columns to occupy, but uh, uh, since uh, we have a small resolution, a small, this rule called a small 8 uh, doesn't apply. We don't have any other rule to apply, and so it will just stack vertically. So uh, with an easy query, we just uh, decide when objects may be stacked one side the other, and when should they should be stacked one below the other 
according to the resolution of the screen. And, and the same goes also for more uh, complex uh, behavior. See that here we have call six, uh, call medium four. What does it mean? It means that uh, without any media query, it applies for every resolution, starting from the extra small. So in the extra small, it will try to uh, occupy six columns. But uh, if the resolution is, is from medium to higher ones, uh, it will only occupy four columns. OK, why? Because now the columns are wider. So we can occupy less columns. Uh, six columns is, is half of the screen. Four columns is one third. So we can make room for something more because the screen is larger. We don't need to occupy 50% of the screen. So as the resolution increases, the number of columns I need to display a given content may be reduced. And by reducing the number of, of columns, uh, we may have opportunity for other items to be inserted in the same space. So we have different classes that will you know, determine the behavior at different resolutions. So, for example, you see here, we are in a medium resolution, so 8 and 4. This is a 4, 4, 4. And below, 6 and 6. If I go below the medium resolution, so I pass the checkpoint, the, the, the breakpoint, and now I'm in a small resolution. This doesn't apply anymore. And so it will take the whole line. In the second case, uh, this uh, class will not apply. And so this one will apply. And so it will uh, occupy 50% of the screen. In this case, we have uh, this doesn't apply, but the column six does. And so six and six and 12. And the other six, <laughs> of course, cannot stay in the same row. They rope to the next one. Six, six, and six will be 18, but we only have uh, 12 columns. So in any case, six means half of the screen width. So half and half, and then the third half will be in the next row. And so on. If we go any further, nothing will change because the nothing uh, uh, working on the on the small uh, on the small breakpoint. Okay. So it takes a while to be familiar with that, and I always find it uh, counterintuitive to have less columns when you have the higher resolution. Huh? Uh, I, I try to explain it in an intuitive way, but uh, inside myself, I always struggle. Because I want to say, okay, if it's larger, then I want more columns. No, I want less columns because they are wider. But once you get the, the gist of it, uh, it's quite easy to apply these uh, classes and have, uh, to have a, um, a responsive uh, layout. Hmm? So, what does it mean to do that on our example? Well, for example, we can start, uh, of course, we should start by giving the suitable, uh, let's say, um, elements in the, in this, in the HTML. Uh, let's imagine that this uh, is the main body, and we want to use the uh, bootstrap to, to create the two columns, for example. So what we know is that we can use the classes of bootstrap, and for example, have one class uh, container, Saying, okay, I want to, I want, I want you to manage this part of the page, container or container fluid, depending on when we want a fixed uh, width or a full uh, um, window. And then the content I have should be put inside some rows. Well, I only have one row, so I have to create these extra elements to instruct Bootstrap about what I want to do. And this row is composed of two columns. So I could create an extra div or just apply the booster classes to the element, of the, to the sectioning I had. I just can apply this class, column, and this other class, class column. 
When I do this, container, row, and column, if nothing is wrong, we, I should get some two column layout for my content. Right now, they have equally divided the size of the screen. Maybe it's not what I want. Uh, maybe the left column should be smaller and the right column should be larger. And so I could decide that this one should be a three and nine, for example. And so uh, let's maybe have the inspector to see the margins. Let Okay, we have the, the, it doesn't fill all the width of the screen because the container class gives me a fixed width of the content depending on the screen size. Okay, so if I resize the screen a little, it doesn't change the size of the container. Of course, when I, when I, uh, I resize more than a given size, it starts, uh, it starts shrinking the, the columns. But you see that it goes in steps, tuck, tuck. because it will decide uh, some margin to be applied according to the to the breakpoint where we are. This is how the container works. Works at okay at, a, at, the, at this given resolution. In this resolution ranges, I want to give uh, some fixed size for the content, and the rest will be margins. Of course, when the resolution increases, uh, I will give more time for the more space for the for the content and uh, the margin will will change. But if you see here, if I move inside a breakpoint, uh, the size of the column will be always the same. It eats the margin before changing the size of the columns. This is a class container. If we change it to container fluid, it would always occupy the whole content, sorry, the inspector here. You see that it will try to fill the whole page, and of course, will shrink down in proportion. It, it depends on what you want to achieve. There are two different uh, uh, algorithms uh, that manage the space. Uh, the container fluid tries to put the space inside the columns as much as possible. The container tries to uh, reduce uh, the say wobbling of the columns uh, if you change the resolution just a little bit. But apart from that, they're working the same way. These are not yet responsive because these uh, uh, commands work for all resolutions. But what if we want, uh, uh, say, this left column to disappear or to be put on the top uh, if the resolution is too small? Okay, we can just say we want this three column only if the resolution is medium or higher. And this will make, if I reload, the sidebar actually on the side if the resolution is high or in the top if the resolution becomes too low. Okay, this, uh, uh, because uh, right now the three columns doesn't apply anymore, and uh, as we said before, it will occupy all the all the all the block uh, uh, all the all the space that the block would normally have. So all the twelve columns. Okay, so maybe medium is uh, too high. We go to small, and uh, but we can experiment and see. There's a, there are also other possibility of uh, hiding the column when uh, it's uh, uh, when the resolution is too small. So maybe instead of putting it uh, above, I want just to make it disappear completely. Okay, so there are also attributes for doing that uh, in in Bootstrap. So you you, you will find them so it's here in the browser in the in the Bootstrap. Uh, uh, properties, uh, I don't remember about visibility, 
display here. Whether you can decide whether to display or not an element for a given resolution. So there are a lot of, uh, of tricks you can play uh, with this framework. There's a lot of documentation here. Uh, I just wanted to show you one example about navigation bars that we want to have in our, there is that. Huh? To explain you how it works, uh, and uh, uh, it also gives you some uh, several examples uh, of how it looks like and the corresponding code. Of course, a lot of uh, code is uh, nearly cut and paste, so to get, uh, to get a result, you have uh, to have uh, a given nesting of the components of the divs uh, with, the, with the right classes in order to satisfy what the what the um, the library is wanting you to do. So it takes uh, a while to make it to, to understand how the different components work, but then the result, of course, the time needed for understanding how this component works is much less than setting up everything up uh, uh, by hand. Also, maybe we may have a look at another content which are the tables so with a couple of uh, uh, classes class equal to table we immediately transform my table like this instead of what we have okay we have like that uh, which is not very nice uh, i just uh, add the class table and uh, Ah, sorry. It's, um, just here, and we'll style it with the lines, with the spacing, and so on. Okay. Uh, so we we need to do some some exercises, but basically, what we could do. Just remember that my main.css is not loaded anymore. Everything I did uh, was just to call the proper classes in Bootstrap. Then, of course, if you want to do something extra, something more, you can load your own CSS file and do whatever you want. But first, maybe let's try to use the predefined classes to make our lives easier. Okay. So uh, on Thursday, you will try to apply this. Uh, uh, so let's try to start dir directly from the Bootstrap framework and try to think uh, which classes you want to do. Uh, my suggestion is uh, not don't start uh, with a responsive layout in mind. Start with just with a simple layout. Okay, and then if you want, once it's completed, try to understand how it should change when you change the resolution. Okay, thank you for today. <laughs>